Thank you, gentlemen, for being here. We're going to discuss the consensus workshop on the multimodal approach. If you could tell us a little bit about what that is and why it's important, please. So maybe I can start. Uh, the discovery of CCSVI uh, underwent through ultrasound imaging and uh, catheter venography as supposed gold standard. Uh, however, very early on, it was understood that uh, 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 ultrasound uh, uh, is very operator dependent and uh, can be used only in trained hands. And even in trained hands, there is, uh, you know, at maximum reproducibility between two people uh, that is uh, agreement uh, between uh, two uh, technicians in a range between 80 to 90 in trained technicians. Uh, Professor Zamboni reported somewhat higher, but in our hand it, it was between 80 and 90 percent. That means that in 10 to 20 percent of cases there will be, you know, a mistake, right, an error. So uh, uh, that clearly, you know, uh, led to uh, plus the studies have, that have been originally published uh, reported from 100 percent in Professor Zamboni work, 50 percent or more than 15 hour uh, hands to, to, to the other people who did not find at all. And you have a number of papers who reported the, uh, uh, that the prevalence is zero. Now, clearly, if you have a disease that's or, or a condition that is present and you find 100 to zero, there is some problem, right? So, uh, so that led to uh, 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 doing and investigating how to find the same problem with a number of different techniques. And so the multimodal studies can be done in two ways, invasive and non-invasive. It's preferable to have a number of non-invasive techniques, mainly Doppler, MRI versus uh, catheter venography or other uh, uh, invasive techniques like intravascular ultrasound uh, uh, and, and basically finding whether you are uh, uh, finding the same uh, problem in, in, in patients and healthy controls and uh, I, I can speak later about the study that we are doing in Buffalo. You want to add something? Uh, yeah, uh, actually, uh, I'm, start, um, I'm going to, to, to make a brief uh, review about chronic uh, venous uh, disease. I, I'm talking about lower legs, uh, about the lower venous system in the legs. Uh, we have some many problems there. Valve's insufficiency seems to play a very important role uh, uh, with dramatic changes in the skin and all these things. So a question which arises, and is very logical, why the same pathophysiology in the venous system, I'm talking about internal jugular veins, vertebral veins, uh, are going to be without consequences in the brain tissue? So this is a, a, a challenging question, uh, which we have to, to, to answer. And on the other hand, as uh, Professor Zivadinov says, in our study, we have so far in Athens uh, more than 300 patients. The prevalence of the uh, uh, chronic cerebrospinal venous insufficiency patients with MS, it, it was quite high, uh, about 60%. In contrast, in healthy people, it was less than 20%. So I think it makes sense this, and all of, of us, we have to think about this and to proceed in the right way. What are the advantages and disadvantages of these different methods? I mean, we're using a multimodality approach. Probably we would need an hour oh, to, okay. to, to explain <laughs> you. And actually, in the recent review paper in Expert Review Neurotherapeutics, I just had three tables for ultrasound, MRI, and catheter venography, what are advantages and disadvantages? And uh, I think that, uh, you know, uh, one thing uh, uh, that's important is to understand that uh, uh, Do uh, Doppler has clearly uh, superb values for detecting the flow in the veins because A, 
you can easily move the patient from sitting to the supine position, from upright to the supine, which clearly has a lot of to do with the hemodynamics of the, of the venous blood. Second, because you can regulate when the patient, how the patient is breathing, when he's going to hold the breath, all the things which are clearly very much influencing the flow. Third, you can, uh, uh, with the Doppler, uh, have a much higher resolution to penetrate in the vein and image what is in the lumen of the vein, which is something that you have a hard time with the MRI. Uh, on the other hand, with the MRI, uh, you can measure uh, uh, very good the anatomy of these vessels, uh, so number of collaterals, possible morphological stenosis, uh, uh, etc. However, the functional things will be very difficult to monitor as well as those inside the vessel. Third, with catheter venography, you are doing an invasive exam and although you are inside the vessel, still you are entering with a mechanical catheter that can move a lot of the things inside, uh, valves, septums, membranes. And so there is a quiet curve of learning that is discussed uh, uh, about uh, how we interpret these exams because uh, catheter venography is a gold standard, but you know, uh, in not trained hand, even of experienced radiologists and interventional radiologists can be completely misinterpreted. Dr. Leavis, did you uh, want to Absolutely add agree. Um, actually, in these two uh, meetings in Bologna and now in Orlando, we were looking and we are looking still for the ideal uh, method imaging. Uh, of course, ultrasound, uh, actually there is a list of, of uh, of many characteristics that can describe an ideal uh, method imaging. Uh, and this is uh, low risk for, for, for patient, low cost, availability, reproducibility, and the accuracy of the method. But uh, to, be, to be honest, uh, in a recent uh, review, there is no such device. So the best, uh, uh, to my opinion, the best uh, uh, method, uh, the best way to, to proceed is the combination of these methods. To combine the MRV, combine uh, with ultrasound and with catheter venography. Of course, there are many advantages of color Doppler. That's why we, uh, so far, we use it for screening method. It's, uh, it's available, it's, uh, it's, uh, there is low cost, and in very experienced experience hands, uh, the accuracy is quite high. Uh, there are two shortcomings, maybe, disadvantages of the method. The operator dependent, so the, the, the subjectivity of the method, and of course, the artifacts. But in, uh, in experience hands, and if we, uh, we, we, we are going to follow this, the same protocol, standard criteria, then it's, it's getting much more uh, accurate, and, and we, of course we can have a reproducibility of, uh, uh, for the diagnosis of CCSVI. I, I would just like to add that point you raised is extremely important, we, and, and that's, I think, the key. What are the screening methods to uh, detect uh, or individualize those patients who should go uh, catheter venography? And that's why we need cheap, low-cost, and reproducible methods with good potential for screening. Now. Uh, clearly, combining the MRI, which we believe, and ultrasound is definitely a way to go uh, because you are going to increase the confidence that something is there. And uh, we publish actually a paper uh, in which we are uh, saying uh, that uh, by combining the two techniques, you have like 90 plus specificity that this is really what's going to be there. Okay, so uh, maybe we should do the uh, analysis also in a different direction. Uh, uh, okay, how much you are not going to find there, which you are going to find on. And I, I hope, I, I think that the specificity will be much lower. Was that the Buffalo study you were referencing earlier? Yeah. Okay. <coughs> um, so what was the consensus? I mean, what came out of the workshop that, that you think is a critical takeaway? 
Actually, so far there is uh, quite a significant variability between centers. And uh, for our opinion, and we have we had many long discussions in this meeting, um, it's because of different methods, different methodology, different criteria, and uh, of course uh, of the experience is, is a little bit different. And also the devices, the sound devices. So we decided to change, to revise some criteria. Uh, I'm talking about the original criteria in, in Bologna. And we are thinking to, to, to change some uh, and to put some more objective criteria. And to all of us, we have to follow the same criteria, the same protocol. Okay. So what are, I'm yeah. sorry, go ahead, go, Dr. Go, 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 yeah. What are the next steps then for this? So I think that uh, uh, the next steps are A, to validate each of these measures uh, or methods, B, to understand how combination of these uh, uh, methods, which is multimodal approach, uh, is going to work, and to determine whether, you know, in non-invasive way, we can be uh, uh, very certain that uh, the patient should not go uh, under invasive procedures. And uh, uh, CE to clearly uh, search for the new methods uh, that uh, can help us, uh, uh, you know, recognize or diagnose this. But, uh, our opinion is that uh, Doppler in properly trained hands uh, together with the MRI is a very good screening tool to give you an overall idea whether there is uh, CCSVI there or not. And I think that uh, uh, from its coming also from this meeting is that this should be a safe approach uh, uh, at the moment, you know. Because, you know, the things that you are not going to see on these two methods and uh, that you are going to see on catheter venography, I think you would agree with me, this would be fairly rare. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. One more question. In terms of validating and, and determining the best combinations and so forth, one of the uh, doctors that we just interviewed was talking to us a little bit about the Millennium Project and the need for new normal, more normals. Will more normals be part of, deter of your determination process or will that be solely limited to patients that you already have diagnosed with CCSVI? Uh, I mean, uh, uh, in our, we have th more than 300 healthy controls in Buffalo. We feel pretty confident that uh, uh, we have enough controls okay. on uh, uh, MRI and ultrasound. The true, the true problem is that neither one of us has 300 healthy controls on catheter venography or IBUS, and neither Millennium Project that you refer to is going to solve this problem because it's going to be on MRI, ultrasound, mm -hmm. but we really need, and that's extremely hard to be done because IRBs, ethical committees, are not going to easily approve studies in which you are going to do a very invasive mm -hmm. method to the healthy controls. And so all our healthy controls, uh, except those initially that we did, eight of them, which we did the catheter venography, are coming from completely different purposes for which the catheter venography has been done. And I don't think that's, that's good. Uh, I think uh, that's our essential problem. What's the most important takeaway, or what am I missing asking you that you really think needs to be conveyed? Actually, I believe uh, the next step is uh, uh, to, to combine the MRV with ultrasound criteria, which uh, have to be very standards. So this is, uh, uh, these are two methods are non-invasive, um, easily, uh, easily for, for, for the patients, and very accurate, uh, I'm talking about the results. Uh, on the other hand, uh, I want to say that uh, if we put aside our, our uh, controversies uh, and we have to stare up in the same direction, all the, all the uh, specialists, I'm talking about neurologists, mm -hmm. I'm talking about audiologists, maybe we can get some uh, 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 positive results of this uh, 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 theory. And, but we have to work like a team. Mm -hmm. We have to, to work all together and to combine all these uh, diagnostic methods 
we need prospective studies, and we need, of course, to, 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 to examine also healthy people. In Athens, so far, using ultrasound, I examined in, in our uh, vascular lab more than 300. And believe me, uh, uh, most of the patients, they had the same, uh, they had not the same problem uh, with the health control. I have nothing to add more. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.